speak up. This is Lynn. Oops, now I'm recorded. Uh, he, he, him. Uh, Ann and I uh, formed a um, company uh, to help people, um, nonprofits called Next Level Nonprofit Consulting. And during round one, we helped over 50 clients apply for round one of Workforce Ready. Ann, you want to say a word? Sure. Hi, I'm Ann Craig. Um, I'm uh, Lynn's business partner, and I'm also still currently an executive director for a nonprofit that serves youth. And I'm just super excited to be here and to and to help y'all. Thank you. I think I saw Jennifer on the call. I'm here. Yes. Hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Wisdom. I'm a psychologist and I've worked for many years in academia and I'm now working independently. I do a lot of training on grant writing uh, and am particularly sensitive to issues of um, mental health, substance use, people in recovery, um, and their needs related to workforce issues. That said, I can work with anybody and would love to, to work with you. I'll put my information in the chat. Thanks. Thank you. And I see Andres. Hey everyone, uh, Andres Oswell, he, they pronouns with Se Puede PDX. Um, my background is in program design and evaluation, um, grant implementation and scoring uh, in government and years in nonprofit service as well. I provide holistic consulting here, um, but my goal is just to work with you all as you navigate this program, figure out what's a good fit and try to reach our priority populations effectively. I'll also drop my info in the chat. Thanks so much. Just wanna make sure I didn't miss anyone else. Okay, great. I think those are all our TA providers on the call for now. Thanks, Sarah. And thanks to our technical assistance providers for being here today. Today, we will cover uh, resources for applicants and the timeline for the RFA process. I will do an overview of the round two grants and highlight some of the important aspects of the application, including the attachments. Hopefully, we will have time for questions and answers at the end. However, if you have questions during the presentation, please place them in the chat and I will pause throughout the presentation to answer both the chat questions and any other questions that have come up. There are a few slides I will read because I wanna make sure to cover all of the information on the slide with this is one of them. So please bear with me and thank you for your patience in advance. The web-based application for the Workforce Ready Round 2 grants is hosted through SurveyMonkey Apply. They have an extensive library of frequently asked questions available if you have any challenges with the application itself. In addition to attending an optional information session such as this one, there also are technical assistant providers, as you've already met, available who can answer questions, provide feedback, and assist you through the application process. The technical assistance providers are available to you at no cost, and your contact information can be found in the RFA document itself. This is the timeline for round two grants. I would like to note that both the notice of award and grant agreements are approximate dates. The Future Ready team will work to meet these deadlines, but some aspects of this process may take a little bit more time. Future Ready Oregon itself is a comprehensive $200 million investment from the 2022 legislative session that supports the education and training Oregonians need for family wage careers. It invests in existing successful programs and in innovative equity-focused solutions to bolster recruitment, retention, and career advancement opportunities for priority populations in targeted industry sectors. Priority populations include communities of color, women, low-income communities, rural and frontier communities, veterans, persons with disabilities, incarcerated and formerly incarcerated individuals, members of Oregon's tribes, older adults, and individuals who identify as members of the LGBTQ plus community. Workforce Ready grants specifically are just one component of Future Ready Oregon and reflect a total of investment of $95 million. Workforce Ready grants will be awarded to nonprofit community-based organizations and nonprofit and public workforce service providers who administer workforce programs in the healthcare, manufacturing, and technology sectors. Workforce Ready grants can be used to fund paid work experiences, workforce program tuition and fee assistance, 
wraparound services, the development of culturally and linguistically specific career pathways, and organizational development. We are not providing specific definitions for healthcare manufacturing and technology industry sectors. However, applicants must describe in their application how their project will prepare participants to obtain living wage jobs with benefits in the targeted industry sectors. Workforce ready grants. So for this particular round, we'll be awarding up to $35 million. These, the funding for these uh, dollars come from Fred ARPA dollars. The application period as noted uh, in, the, in this timeline is April 10th through June 23rd, 2023. However, the grant period is July 1st, 2023 to June 30th, 2026. There are no maximum or minimum award amounts and applicants can submit more than one application. Applying for or receiving round one grants will have no impact on future rounds of workforce ready grants. Activities in the scope of the project and applications can, may include hiring staff or contracting for services, developing strategies and plans to launch, expand, sustain, or support workforce programs, including program development, preparing for future workforce funding opportunities, including future rounds of workforce ready grants, purchasing equipment, technology, or other supplies, paying for administrative costs, and any other activities necessary to increase the organization's capacity to launch, expand, sustain, or support workforce programs in the healthcare, manufacturing, and technology industry sectors. So that was a quick overview, but a lot of information. So I wanted to pause for a moment. I'm going to check the chat um, and then open it up to a few questions if anybody has any questions on the content that has been covered thus far. So let me look over here. Capital purchases. Capital purchases can be included. They, they have a little bit of a different reporting requirement through, through ARPA. Um, so there, there is some certain constraints on that, but they can be part of it as long as it's supporting um, workforce ready programs as outlined in the RFA um, in those particular uh, sectors of the industries. Is K through 12 eligible? Um, Carrie, do you, do you mind answering this one? Is K through 12 eligible? Yeah. There is no age limit um, for participants, but it does need to be a connection to a workforce development program. So if it is a K through 12, there needs to be a direct connection to at what age the programming would start and how that would connect to workforce development in one of the three targeted industry sectors. Thank you. Um, what is the maximum grant award? There is no um, maximum grant award. So there's no minimum or maximum right now. Does anybody else have any questions? Are, are, drones, are drones covered under technology? Um, if you can show that it would allow a, one of the participants to enter a drone program um, and you can link that back to technology within your application, then yes, um, that link has to be done by you in the application itself. property improvements for real estate being used as a workforce CTE center. Um, so it's, Michael, could you clarify that for a little bit? Are you, are you talking more about capital improvements on a site that are being used for a CTE center that, in which training is happening? So I'm not hearing Michael. So if the, yes, a classroom applied, yes, yes then. Um, if that is doing capital improvements in, on a CTA center that is going to do training within healthcare, manufacturing and technology, then yes. Um, are there any preferences for formal apprenticeships as an element or a factor? Um, there are no preferences for formal apprenticeships or other types of apprenticeships. 
so this is not a uh, part of the general funds for the state. So it actually runs on a different schedule since these are federal ARPA dollars. So it does go to 2026. And can funds be used to provide support services in alignment with employment prep, prep preparation, such as gas, internet, hygiene, and clothing? Yes, those will be considered wraparound services and they're absolutely um, eligible under the, this particular grant as long as they are for programs in the identified industry sectors. Um, and we are not offering uh, definitions of the sectors that were not provided within the legislation. Um, so that is going to be have to be something that applicants make the connection um, within their application. Uh, what strategies will be used to be equitable grant awarded grant funds in both urban and rural areas? Um, that is something that we do consider in the application uh, process, although um, it, the funds, at least with the previous round, were not equally distributed. Um, location of the services provided were part of the consideration of grant funding. Um, expungement fees, legal fees, fines associated with driver's license suspension. You know what, I am not sure if they can be used for expungement fees, legal fees, and fines associated with driver's license suspension. Um, let, uh, let me do some research on that and we will add that to our frequently asked questions. And they do not have to do grant applications have to be statewide or can they be targeted a few selected counties or regions? They can be targeted to a few selected counties or regions. They do not have to be statewide, although they can also, they can be statewide. They are not required to be statewide. All right. I'm going to pause, um, stop there with the questions and we will turn, return to them uh, in a few moments. Over here. Um, now for the discussion section, I would like to cover the application itself. All the questions for the application are in the attachments to the RFA. So you will have that information within the RFA when you access it. A couple requirements that I wanna note, all applicants must be reg registered with SAM.gov and have a UEI number and also have an EIN through the IRS. That's part of the application process. You will also need to identify the county of your headquarters and if different from your headquarters, the county in which the work is being performed. These are the gen generally the different parts of the grant application, excluding the attachments, which I will discuss separately. I would like to note um, that there are six evaluation questions, the, one, the ones numbered one through six here, which will, um, I'll recover one of them in more detail in just a moment. Each evaluation question has a suggested word maximum. These are truly our suggestions are intended as a guide only. Each evaluation question has been assigned the maximum allowable points an applicant can earn during the evaluation of that particular item. And you can see those numbers here. These suggested word limits and evaluation question points are also located in the RFA. In the application, each applicant must identify if they are a workforce service provider or a community-based organization. Although there is a hundred word max suggested for this particular question, you truly can just identify the type of your organization um, in that particular uh, part of the application. Please use the definitions provided here to determine your type of organization. Each applicant must also identify which industry sector the project is related to. You can select more than one sector. And each applicant will also need to identify the priority population or populations the project will serve. You can also select more than one of these from this particular section, but please only select the specific populations the project serves. There are not more points if you select more of the priority populations. So I'd like to pause here again to answer some questions. Can you put the link to the RFA in the chat? In the chat. Um, so we have it right there. Thanks, Stephanie. Will there be additional rounds of future ready funding? Yes, there will be further rounds of future ready, ready funding. Um, the, um, 
amount of rounds have not by ident been identified at this time? And can funds be used to build fundraising infrastructure to ensure program sustainability post-grant period? Um, as long as that fundraising infrastructure is focused on uh, the three sectors identified in workforce ready grants, um, yes. Will these slides be accessible after the session? Um, yes, you will be able to find these slides um, on the RFA website as well. Are there prohibitive acti prohibited activities with these funds? Um, you know, I am not, I'm not sure of that. Carrie, are there prohibited activities with these funds? Uh, that is a really broad it's a question. Really big and question. I uh, there are certainly prohibited activities on these funds, but it would have to be a more specific conversation. So you could consider engaging specifically with one of our technical assistance providers if you have an example of what some uses of funds might be. Certainly we need to follow the law, we need to follow uh, the rules that are outlined by the federal government in the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, and then there are just some, some guidance things we have to follow according to the Oregon Accounting standards manual. Um, so it would be better to answer that offline uh, related to your specific project. So thank you, Carrie. Will all future ready funding rounds focus on the same three sectors exclusively? Um, so the funding for future ready programs as a whole is different than the workforce ready programs, which is what we're talking here. The workforce ready grants are required to focus on those three particular sectors. Um, so for this, this particular funding, yes, they will continue to focus on those sectors. Um, can you discuss the types of par partnerships that may be supportive of workforce ready objectives? Um, so discuss the, that's a, that's a very broad question to, to discuss um, all of the possible partnerships um, there. Um, that's, that's a wide variety of opportunities from uh, the business sector to K-12 education to colleges to service providers. Um, so in the existing programs, we have a wide range, wide, wide range of partnerships um, and we would still be looking for um, whatever partnerships will support the uh, programs to support students entering those particular workforce, uh, the industry sectors that have been identified. So with a grant period of June 2023 through June 2026, July 2023, sorry, to June 2026, is there a preference for timing of programming? Can a proposal only cover a portion of the reporting period versus a project that may span the entire grant period? There is no preference. Um, you can set that, that period when you apply. I think I got all the questions. I'm gonna to return to the presentation and um, talk about the evaluation criteria, the scoring rubric and the evaluation items specifically. So um, Future Ready Oregon is specifically here, the Workforce Ready Grants and tend to be as transparent as possible with the entire RFA process and evaluation and the evaluation of the applications. With that in mind, we would like to share the scoring rubric used for the six evaluation items in the, in the application. Hopefully this will be helpful as you answer the questions. I know there's a lot of information on this slide, this information can be found in the RFA and these slides will be shared. So you, these will be accessible and hopefully easier to read in a different environment. I do wanna go over the anatomy of an evaluation item, um, just so you have an idea of, of what they look like and, and why they are structured that way. Each evaluation item is identified with a number and a title that indicates what the questions will address. In this case, evaluation item one covers the organization description and capacity. Each evaluation item will also identify the suggested word maximum and the points assigned to this item for evaluation purposes. As I mentioned before, the suggested word maximum truly is just a suggestion. Lastly, each evaluation item will have the questions most evaluation items contain multiple questions. Please address each of the questions within each evaluation item when submitting your application. 
One of the last few questions, which are not part of the evaluation items, asks if and how the project might be scaled down. Um, you will also ask to, I, to identify how much of your budget will go to the categories identified in this question. These categories include funding the creation or expansion of education and training programs in the key sectors of healthcare manufacturing and technology and or providing direct benefits to individuals, including stipends for earn and learn experiences, funding to pay for education, training costs, and wraparound support services, and or expanding the organizational capacity to provide workforce development services. So that is the remainder of the application, excluding um, the attachments, which I will go over in a second. I did wanna go back and answer some of these questions see if there's any more that have come up. So can funds be used to provide trainings to executive directors and professional funders of nonprofit organizations within each of these sectors? Training can, can be part of, of the uh, request for funding. It depends on what that training is for, however. So if you can tie it to the project that you're doing that will support um, individuals and entering the workforce in the identified sectors, then yes. Can partner organizations be for-profit businesses? It's a good question. I actually don't know the answer to that question. Carrie, if you're still here, um, can partner organizations be for-profit for -profit businesses? I think Carrie logged off. Okay, yeah, she may have logged off. I have written that question down, however, and we will definitely get that um, in our frequently asked questions, um, which you can access on our um, RFA site. Are there any other questions at this time? Okay, we just have a few more things to go over and then I can open it up to more questions. I wanna discuss the application attachments. Um, this part of the application, all of the, these documents are also part of the attachments in the RFA. So you have access to all of this, the information I will be covering. There are multiple attachments. Um, there are attachments that you will need to provide as part of your application and attachments to the RFA, which are just informational. The required attachments for the application itself for you to apply include the project budget, application certification, and project plan. Since the funding for this round of grants are federal ARPA dollars, we must follow specific guidelines for the budget and budget categories. You can find an example of the budget categories in the RFA attachments. The only optional document is your federally negotiated indirect cost rate. If you do have one, you can attach that to the application in SM Apply. So the other attachments in the RFA are intended to be informational, as I mentioned, so that organizations can better understand um, some of the expectations once if they receive a grant. Um, and those include reporting expectations, um, performance plan report, quarterly reports around uh, funding and invoicing um, and performance reports and participant data reports. There's quite a few of them. We do want to acknowledge that um, this sometimes these reporting can be a burden for some organizations. So when you think about your budget, you may want to factor this into the project plan and budget. And lastly, um, the last informational attachments uh, I will go over are the background checks and insurance requirements. Depending on the proposed project, there will be different requirements for both background checks and insurance. For everyone, there'll be a certain level of insurance, but if you uh, work with vulnerable populations defined as minors, the elderly, and persons with the dis disabilities, there will be further background checks and insurance requirements. You will be able to find information about both the background checks and insurance requirements in the RFA attachments. So there's quite uh, a large section on that, so you can better understand those particular expectations um, before you apply for these, these grants. So that is everything that I have. It is question time again. Um, let's see, I have similar questions. Let's see, let me go back. 
I have a similar question about for-profit. Could subcontractors or service providers under funded projects be private for profit entities such as a training provider? Okay, so with that particular question, um, the, the answer is yes. So we don't really see subcontractors or folks who are doing a specific task, such as if you hire somebody to do your payroll. Um, we don't consider that a partner, um, but you may be using some of your funding to pay for that to do your payroll or to do particular training. So those definitely can be um, for-profit entities. Um, the one that I will need to check on is if you are using another um, provider to let's say do your, to actually do the direct support to participants, whether they need to be a nonprofit or can be a for-profit. I do need to double check that. Our legislative support lab, absolutely. Letters that are supportive la are allowed and are you're able to upload letters of support in the attachments in the application. Does anybody else have any questions? We do have um, some time left and I will stick around until the end um, if anybody has any questions or not. Are coalitions or group applications considered? So um, generally uh, the HEC will, will do a grant agreement with a single entity, and then that entity may have agreements with other entities. Um, so more like partnerships. Um, it de kind of depends on what you're defining a coalition as. I would recommend working with uh, the technical assistance providers to kind of tease that out a little bit more because that can mean many different things. If we have several projects, should we submit separate grant applications? Um, if those several projects are different from each other, I would recommend doing separate applications, but keeping in mind that your application, for every, every application you submit will be competing against your other applications, technically speaking. Um, but yes, you can definitely put in separate ones. Is there a link to a previously awarded applications? We, we do not have links to previously awarded applications, the, the applications themselves. We do share out um, in, in our, our media, um, the, app, the grantees who received uh, funding under the previous grant. Um, so on our website, you can access information about those grantees but not their applications themselves. So no, if you, you do not have to submit one application if you want to expand in all three in all three industry sectors. If I understand the three areas as industry sectors, you can you can put in three separate applications. However, um, if you choose to and you have uh, projects that very much fit together, that could and make sense as kind of one, that can be a single application. Um, if you're, especially if you're able to tease out a project into two separate things, but you can absolutely submit multiple applications. They can be in different sectors. They can have different priority populations. Yes, you can also put multiple areas under one application. So multiple uh, industry sectors under one application, multiple priority populations under one application. Yes. Thanks for the, stop, the, the comment about stopping along the way. They were trying this for the first time. So I'm, I'm glad you liked it. <laughs> Thank you. 
I do want to note as folks are, are thinking of other questions, I'll give you some time to do that. Um, we will be going back through um, this converse, the conversation we've had and the questions you've asked and updating our frequently asked questions. It does have to go through a translation process, so it does take a little bit of time. Um, so in a week or so, um, if there's anything unique from this particular presentation, it will end up in our frequently asked questions. So if, for example, um, I get some feedback on including legal fees or not, um, that will end up in the frequently asked questions in a week or so, depending on how long it takes to get back the translation. So would programming centered on barrier removal, barrier removal, such as addressing a lack of transportation options in rural communities, as opposed to training workforce, the work experience alone be an appropriate use of these funds? Um, as long as it is part of supporting uh, folks in, in workforce training in those particular sectors, yes. Um, so that would be considered one of those wraparound services. Um, wraparound services is kind of a broad term, but it can include um, childcare, uh, transportation, um, housing support, supply support. Those are all wraparound services to support uh, individuals as they go through their workforce training programs, whatever those might be. And those are definitely allowed uh, under this particular grant. And if you're, if you're um, trying to tease out whether, uh, whether what you're thinking of for, for your particular project is um, a wraparound service, that is definitely something that uh, you should talk to the technical assistance about. So you mentioned letters of support are allowed and can be uploaded. How much weight might be given to those? Do they matter generally speaking for funding decisions? To be honest, I'm not sure if, if they're particularly weighted um, in, in a kind of numerical way, but they are considered as part of uh, the application. Um, and uh, I'm not sure how, how to articulate this. Numerically, the, the six uh, evaluation items are the things that will have a numerical weight to them although other information is considered in the application review process. So this one doesn't have a particular weight assigned to it. So will the TA addresses be listed somewhere besides in the chat? Yes, they are in the RFA. So while it's relatively early in the ward of future ready funds, are there any data on the priority populations that have been served thus far via future ready organ? That is a wonderful question. And we are all excitedly awaiting for that information. Um, we've only had a small amount of reporting because a, a large part of what future ready organ has been doing is standing up the program, but we do have uh, data starting to come in, more data starting to come in next month, and as soon as we're able to share that out, we will. Could a university be funded? Um, yes, a university or a community college can be funded um, as long as they are providing assistance in those particular uh, industry sectors. So if folks don't have any more questions, I'm more than happy to stay around, but 
I do understand if you'd like to leave at this time, that is also all right. Um, Yes, Lynn. Uh, Heather, you took quite a few questions about multiple applications in multiple areas. I just, I guess my experience as a technical assistance provider is just be, people need to be aware that there are word limits on most of the answers. So they're kind of trading off the complexity of the project versus how, how much space they have to describe it. So there aren't actually word limits. They're on, just on any of the questions? Um, correct. They're only suggested word maximums. Oh. I mean, I'm sure if they like wrote a dissertation and they could possibly break the system. But, um, I, I, in fact, took text and copied it into the, um, when we were testing it, copied it into the system over and over again to see how much text I could put in and I didn't break it. Um, okay. So Thank you. I yes. misinterpreted because the in the application it says suggested 500 yes. words max yeah, and I absolutely I mis I misinterpreted yeah. that but I think it's still a point yes that it if, is a good point yeah if they have two really distinct projects that are not related to each other then they could probably submit two applications but if they're closely related it might get kind of complicated if they yes. split them apart okay thanks I love that you tried to break the system, Heather. That's <laughs> <laughs> that was my explicit job is to try to it's break it. It's a good it. sign that you couldn't. That's great. <laughs> Either that or I'm not good at breaking things. Well, <laughs> and I think I think that's a change from round one, right? So think... for round one, there were there was no mention of of word limits or word minimums. Um, so this is a change. But it yeah. is truly, it is truly just a suggestion. Okay. All right. It's a common question to come up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Sarah, if we could stop recording. With multiple sectors on one application, is there a possibility for partial funding? <laughs> 